This is a video on how to add map unit points to the NCGMP09 or GEMS data model in Global Mapper. Now, first and foremost, we need to get our data added in like we have, and you'll notice that we have map unit points here. And we currently already have some map unit points that have been added in from our ArcGIS map product. So we have one right here that we're looking at which is one of the 166 features located here. Now, in order to add a new one, this is very similar to adding in new point styles. So we want to open up our configuration tab, go to point styles, and here we can go ahead and add in that bit of information that we need. Now, one of the things that we're going to lose when we start working with this is they're going to sort alphabetically. And likely, that means that our map unit points because they are labeled for the unit they represent, they will sort alphabetically in here. Now there's a couple tricks that we can do to minimize that, and mitigate that, um, and I will show that here. The other thing we'll want to pay attention to is that we need to make sure that we add in all the correct attributes so that when we export it back to ArcGIS, we have the ability to extract out the fields that we need in order to make it NCGMP09 or GEMS compliant. So I'm going to start by just making this KMGR right here. And uh, the reason why we don't make these by default is because each map is going to be different. Each map is going to have its own map units. And uh, to create an exhaustive list for the state of New Mexico would be a little ridiculous. And then we have the issue of lumpers and splitters. So they'll break some of these units into even further categories. So one of the things that we want to do right off the bat is just go ahead and create a new type. And in order to get these to sort in points how I want, we can go ahead and add something that allows them to sort at the bottom of that FGDC code list, such as 999. Or you can do 000 or something like that. That'll force it to the top of the numeric list. 999 will more than likely force it to the bottom of that list. And then what we can do is go ahead and put in a hyphen, type in KMGR. Now we, go, we have that uh, label, and this is how they sort. We can go ahead and say, okay, so here's our 999 KMGR. And for attributes, we want to make sure that we add in the appropriate attributes. For example, data source ID, we want to put in your data source ID number. We also want to add in existence confidence with certain or questionable based off of our label that we'll show later on. We want identity confidence. Again, same issue. our label and in this case we want to go ahead and set the default parameter for KMGR to be KMGR and the symbol uh, excuse me the map unit which is the symbol to be KMGR. And then for symbol, we do KMGR as well. Now, there are some tricks in here, and I have these three lined up in a row nicely so that we can identify some of the potential pitfalls that's going to occur. Now, with our data model, one of the things that we do is we identify the map unit as the map unit regardless of its existence confidence and or its identity confidence. So if it's KMGR question mark, we it doesn't matter. The map unit is KMG question mark, KMGR, excuse me. We just edit its certainty of its identity or existence here and say it's probable or questionable. 
the other thing that we do is the label then is the part that gets the question mark. So if it's certainty or identity confidence, excuse me, existence confidence or identity confidence is questionable or probable, the label gets the question mark. So it would look something like this. Now, we've got a couple other parameters that we need to talk about and discuss kind of in depth now, but this should sort everything out. The label gets the question mark, and then we would change this to be questionable and questionable. Now, the other factor that comes in to play with this is when we have units that have specific symbology associated with them. And if we look at our FGDC code book, we can actually get some of these right off the bat. So one of the things that we want to look at in our FGDC code book is on page A321, we have the geologic age symbol font, FGDC geo age. And in that, we have our stratigraphic age and in the uh, fourth column we have the age symbol and we see that we want them to symbolize the correct way and in order to get that char character to draw correctly we need to use what's in the um, um, the uh, fifth column as the character on the keyboard that we use for that okay so I'm gonna go ahead and return this back to certain certain and not question mark so that we have a KMGR set and there it is now let's go ahead and add a new one and this one's going to be 999 I P M let's do that okay so we have Pennsylvania Madera formation and one of the things that happens with this is if we look at that geologic age symbol font page and we go to the Pennsylvanian uh, 32.13 we see that the IP symbol is a special symbol it's not IP it's actually the IP symbol and that is drawn by using an asterisk so we're going to go ahead and add in the IPM so there is my IPM we need to add in our attributes as before so we got to go ahead and add in our data source ID set who is digitizing this set our existence confidence to certain, set our identity confidence to certain, add in our map unit, and by default this one is going to be capital I, capital P, M. And this is where it differs. Our label is now as we look at the 32.13 Pennsylvanian we see that it's an asterisk so we draw an asterisk shift 8 and our M that will then draw the IP symbol and then an M after it and it's the same for symbology or symbol so asterisk M if I refer to that as a splat, just know the asterisk and splat are the same thing. Okay, so now we see that our map unit is IPM, our label is asterisk M, and our symbol is asterisk M. Um, this allows us in the FGDC code to actually draw that IP symbol right here before the M using that uh, asterisk symbol. So this allows us to actually get the correct symbol. A perfect example of this is let's go capital T capital R C so we've got the chin Lee here and let's do the chin Lee lower so T R C L capital T capital R C L oops and I forgot something I forgot to do my 999 so it dropped down to the T's instead of being up at the top of the list And now it's not going to sort that way until I reopen this back up. So 
there's a pit, a pitfall that you'll end up run, uh, running into if you don't do 999, which is the reason why I did that to begin with, because then we have a sorting field right off the bat that allows it to be at the top of the list, so it's always at the top of the list. And you don't have to go through this whole thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in our attributes. So same as before, we're just going to go ahead, set the data source to be who the person digitizing is. Our existence confidence is certain, and by default, these will always show up as uh, certain until we change them ourselves. And we want to set our map unit, and in this case, instead of the asterisk, to draw that capital T, uh, small cap R stacked on top of the T, we need the caret symbol. And in this case, we're doing Chinle lower formation for our map unit. Excuse me, for our map unit, it's capital T, capital R. Sorry, capital T, capital R. For our label, what it actually is using to label the unit is caret CL. And then the symbol is the same. Caret CL. Now you're asking, why in the heck are we doing this? It's actually pretty elegant and pretty simple, the rationale behind it. In different fonts, different characters draw different symbols. So one of the prime examples is the two that I just did. In the font Helvetica, asterisk does TR, Carrot does IP. Here in FGDC GeoAge symbol font, Carrot does the TR and Asterisk does the IP. So they flipped in that font list. So the reason why we have our map unit be actual characters is so that we can identify it regardless of the font. We will always know that capital T, capital R is Triassic. We don't have to determine whether or not the, ast the caret or the asterisk being used is either Pennsylvanian or Triassic based on which font was being used. We can ignore which font was being used and identify the unit simply off of map unit. This makes it much easier to identify in the future for other people working on our digital files as uh, font files may possibly change. There's certain things that we want to take into consideration for preserving this information for posterity. And in this case, using map unit as a complete text-based, character-based explanation independent of font, we always guarantee that the next person using our map can identify what unit this is. So that's the reason why we have that. The other special case that we um, can use is this uh, <clears throat> Cambrian and Precambrian. So I'm going to put those in as examples as well because it's good to see these things actually used. So let's say we have some uh, Cambrian unit. Let's call it capital C. Now this gets difficult because is that Carboniferous, or is that Cambrian? Here's the trick. In the Bureau of Geology, we do not use Carboniferous. We use Pennsylvanian or Mississippian. So we either have IPM or M. Uh, excuse me. We either have IP or we have M. That allows us to avoid this pitfall of being Carboniferous OB. We know that that is Cambrian OB. So with that being said, we can go ahead and do the same thing. So there's our 999 Cambrian OB, and our attributes get all the same attributes as before. We do our data source ID, the person who is digitizing it, our existence confidence being certain, our identity confidence being certain, and our map unit being capital C for Cambrian, OB, and then our label 
gets our underscore OB and our symbol gets underscore OB. And this is very similar for our precambrian. So 999 dash lowercase p uppercase c. That tells us this is precambrian. Then we can go ahead and do the same thing, only this time instead of the underscore, to get that PC symbol, we use the equal sign. So again, set our data source ID, set our confidence, and then our map unit is PC. label and symbol get equals and now this will draw with the correct symbology for the Precambrian symbol the age symbol okay so now we've got some of our units now we can go ahead and add in these styles as we need fit we go ahead and do the same thing we do our create point we click what our unit represents let's start with our KMGR because that's where we are make sure to put this in the correct field which is map unit points and here is now where we can edit this to be representative of our certainty. So for this specific point that I have just created, which will show up somewhere right here, we can now adjust these default parameters for this specific feature, which is the reason why I put those in by default, all being certain, because here is where we go ahead and identify those that are probable or questionable. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and actually label it that way. Let's go ahead and say the existence confidence is actually probable and the identity confidence is questionable. And then our label being KMGR question mark can be done. And our map unit is KMGR. It's always that default standard unit that we have a level of certainty for. The specific for this unit, this polygon, will be done with this field, the label field, in the existence confidence and identity confidence. And you can do this either way. This can be probable, probable or questionable, questionable, or whatever combination actually seems right for that specific unit. If you're certain it exists, yes, this is definitely an existing unit. We're fairly certain that it exists, but we're not sure the identity. Is it A or is it B? Then we can go ahead and say questionable and call it A question mark or B question mark. And then once we say OK, then our symbol draws. And now we need to label off of label and now we can see that this one that was there by default is labeling KMGR and our new one that we altered to be a questionable identity now labels with that and the unit is still KMGR and the reason why we do this um, is because in our data table for description of map units we then don't have to make a description for KMGR question mark. No matter what, we're saying that we think with a certain level of confidence that it is KMGR. We're just not entirely sure. We can always just make that entry for KMGR. We make one entry for the this is what this unit is. And then for our map itself, when we have a level of uncertainty, we just go ahead and label that unit as, well, we think it's KMGR but our certainty is in question. And that allows us to put in less entries and our join tables are much more dynamic and easier to edit long term. 
I hope that helps answer your question. I am going to go ahead and delete this point so that it does not persist. And now you can see that since we have at least one of those already built in, we could go ahead then and add in whatever point we need for each unit. So let's say I had KML built. We can go ahead and select that one. And since we only need one of these for each different unit, not for each different certainty, we only need a few of these. But since each map is unique, we go ahead and make uh, the authors pick which unit those are based on where their map is and what units they have on their map. So I hope this helps in answering the question for how do we deal with map unit points. This is a quick and simple way of dealing with it. Remember to do your 999 or 000 based on where you want these to sort so that you can see them in your list very easily versus being buried down here in the alphabetical list.